Yes, Godfather's penis. Queen Mother tried to help abuse girl, living out the rest of her life in what appeared to be a discarded... <laughs> and another good example of it comes from the lesbian vampire killers. They might be a way to save millions of relationships by adding one single feature to a text messaging app. Or this might be an absolutely load of... <sighs> or this might be a load of an absolutely unrealistic and quixotic bullshit. <laughs> the feature is the high. And the feature is basically the ability to communicate the tone of voice with pure text and be able to do it super easy and super fast. So then how exactly do I think a tone of voice in a message can save relationships? And how do you communicate the tone of voice with just text? Hey darling, it's me Philip. You. How about you maybe just use f***ing voice messages to communicate the tone of voice in a message? Kisses. Ah. Thank you very much for watching, like if you like it, subscribe, hit the bell, and see you soon. No, there are three reasons behind my thinking why I think voice messaging is not an option. Number four, quite often I just need to reply with one or two words. For example, yes, Godfather's penis, yes, Godfather's penis, yes, Godfather's penis, yes, Godfather's penis. Number three. Many people uh, prefer text messages over vo <laughs> voice messages for various reasons. I'll mention uh, some of them in point one and point two in a second. But who would save marriages of those people, huh? Number two, I have some questions that I don't have answers for just yet. Is there an effective technique to communicate the tone of voice and text that can be used in books? Can such a text messaging app improve the quality of life of people who lost hearing? Is it possible with just text to recreate the experience of hearing phrases in different tones of voices for people who are deaf from birth? And finally, is it possible to exterminate a small family of raccoons using a machine gun? Huh? No, that's a, that's a different, different video. And finally, number one. I f***ing hate voice messages. So how exactly a tone of voice and messages can save relationships? Here is the current situation and an example of how an aham na na Here is a current situation and an example of how a harmless text message can ruin a whole relationship. I can't believe you're still wearing that dress. I can't afford a new one with you eating through family budget like a pig, you fat son of a b Believe it or not, the husband meant well. In 2017, the UK Times published the article with the following heading. Queen Mother tried to help abuse girl. And what the article really meant to say was Queen Mother tried to help abuse girl. But it was already too late. The Queen's reputation was irreversibly damaged. She was forced to become a beggar, living out the rest of her life in what appeared to be a discarded dishwasher just behind the metal press in an industrial dumpster outside of Slough. And on top of this all, all of this is not true. <clears throat> oh well, the headline in the Times is, uh, the rest I quite successfully made up. In any case, this is called syntactic ambiguity. And this kind of a syntactic... <laughs> and this kind of a syntactic ambiguity is called crash blossoms which is a sentence, uh, usually a news headline, which is a subject to incorrect interpretation due to syntactic or other lexical ambiguity. According to the New York Times, the term originated in 2009 from an article in a Japanese newspaper called Today. The headline of an article was this. Violinist linked to JL Crush Blossoms, which left many readers wonder what the hell was Crash Blossoms. Turns out the article was about a child whose father died in the JL crash. And when the child grew up, he became a successful and blossoming violinist. Violinist linked to JAL crash blossoms. And another good example of it comes from the lesbian vampire killers. The lesbian vampire killers, the title of a horror movie. Is it lesbians that kill vampires? Killers of lesbian vampires or lesbian vampires that are killers? 
the married couple in the example before fell victim to this exact syntactic ambiguity. What the wife read was, I can't believe you're still wearing that dress. And what the husband actually meant to say, I can't believe you're still wearing that dress. But the wife has already sent her reply. And it was pretty unambiguous. Things like that could end marriages. So the question I was really curious about was, is this possible to fix this? Hi! And looking at all the previous examples, my thought was, well, that's very easy. Just make certain words bold. But this is not that simple. There is actually much more to communicating the tone of voice. You can't just get away with making text bold. And here is why. Look at the following sentence. We could go to the Ivan the Terrible sex performance. Go where? We could go to the Ivan the Terrible sex performance. Go where? In the first example, I mean to ask, what the hell do you mean? What is the Ivan the Terrible sex performance? Go where? And in the second example, go where? I know what Ivan the Terrible sex performance is. I just don't see the way we could go there. Because, for example, the place could have been destroyed or is otherwise somehow inaccessible. And you can't fix this by making a word bold, because where would you make it bold? It's the single word there that changes the meaning of the whole sentence depending on how it's pronounced. Could we clarify this without using any audio? Is this even possible? Or did we hit the limit of this communication form? Are there messaging apps that try to solve that problem? And if they are, why are they not popular? Ah, uh, well, there aren't. And this could be really bad. This makes me think that if nobody has already tried to solve that problem before, maybe nobody needs this problem to be solved. But the fact that nobody has ever tried to solve this before does not stop me. And also, I lied. People actually already did think of the ways to solve this problem. Already conducted experiments on people and already might have found the solution. It's just that nobody has turned that solution into a messaging app before. Researchers from MIT, Media Lab and Center of Advanced Visual Studies conducted a study exploring how speech recognition technology could be used to design typographic fonts that more accurately represented the expressive repertoire, <laughs> the expressive repertoire of speech. The researchers developed a prosodic font, a font that assumed a dynamic and a temporal form. <sighs> emulating tonal and the rhythmic motion of a speaking voice. Meaning that the font changed in size, width, height and the thickness of glyphs in real time based on the prosodic changes in the real speech. To make the font more readable, the researchers simplified the letter forms to the minimum necessary to distinguish letters from one another and included means of representing multiple letter forms, called phonetic ligatures. For example, th, sh and j were made into a single glyph to represent the sound they pronounce. To test it out, they had two people, a male and a female, tell stories about different emotions, like being joyful, sad, content and angry, and recorded their speech. Then they analyzed the speech to figure out what prosodic variations were happening and used that to create the prosodic font. And they did some testing on people and it was a success people were actually able to successfully identify the emotions encoded in the text. And there is also another successful study. Another recent paper from the researchers from Brazil. Hidden balls, whispers and yelps. Can text be made to sound more than just words? The paper explores way to include prosody directly into captioned speech to add an emotional dimensions that currently are not currently <laughs> that currently are not adequately conveyed with adjectives like shouting. When you watch the video, the words that are spoken will usually look the same, regardless of how they were said, which means some of the emotions and feelings conveyed by the speaker will be lost in text. First of all, the authors wanted to create a system that could be used in many different situations, so they kept it simple by only using a baseline shift, a kerning and boldness. After analyzing the different aspects of speech, they created tokens that show how each word should be displayed in the captions, based on things like emphasis, length or tone. The researchers created a system that lets them change the height of the letters, the spacing between them and how bold they are. They then use these three stylings to represent the different aspects of the speech, like pitch, duration and how loud something is. 
and uh, to avoid needing extra fonts, the researchers use the font called Inter, which is an open type font that has many different weights built in it. And they also created a chart of how much weight can be added to each letter, based on how many weights are available in the Inter font family. And tests on people were also conducted with some interesting results. To test the system, the researchers made the browser plugin that let them test 117 people who could hear. They then hired an actor to read poems in different ways to create a dataset of the tests. So were test subjects able to read the intonation that was encoded in the text by the authors? All in all, people were able to match the captions with the correct audio 65% of the time. They may be indeed a way to create a messaging app that would allow expressing the tone of voice and a whole wide range of emotions with just a regular text. In my next video, I am curious to explore the ways of doing it. Thank you very much for watching. Like it if you liked it, subscribe, hit the bell, uh, this helps uh, cactus victims and victims. Subscribe, hit the bell, it helps cactus assault victims across the world, and see you soon.